Hello everyone. This week we're going to be talking about the process by which we make decisions, and the implications that those decisions have for us further down the line. Most people, when they talk about consequences of your decisions, talk about things that will impact you negatively as a result. But the reality is much more complicated than that. And we're left asking the question, how much control do we actually have over our life? Self-determinism is this sort of comfortable lie that we just tell ourselves we have to feel like we have some level of control over our lives. I have to pay car insurance. And someone might crash into my car, and I'd have no control over that. But the insurance I was forced to have to have helps me in that situation. But I did choose my insurance provider. I chose my car. I chose the route that I took that day, where I parked. But I didn't really have any control over the route which I should take which would take the least amount of time for me to get to my destination. I didn't have any control over which car I could afford, or whether I needed the car in the first place. So already in this simple example, you can see that there's so much interplay between our decisions and what options are available to us based on our previous choices. Things like what major we chose in college affect what job opportunities are available to us later in life. The jobs we choose to commit to affect our quality of life, the amount of free time we have left over after our commute and actual work, and how much time and money we have available to spend on other things we could choose to do. If you think about it, a lot of the choices we have available to us are made for us by what's legal, what we feel comfortable doing, by social norms. We tend to shame ourselves for when things don't go well, even though we never really had that much control to start with. And on the other end of the spectrum, we tend to pat ourselves on the back when things go well, when again, we never really had that much control over the situation. We don't really have all the information to make all the best decisions for ourselves. So we just do the best we can with some odd combination of logic and emotion and gut feeling, and we just go for it. And that's all we should expect of ourselves. So the interplay between control and decision making is really complicated. It, it's kind of hard to talk about this in the abstract. All of this happens so seamlessly in our minds that it feels like we're following our intuition. Sometimes we actually take the time to Rory Gilmore this and make a pro-con list and actually formalize our thought process to try to sort out all the various factors that go into every decision that we make. But for the most part, we're not thinking about how or why we make the decisions that we make, we just make them. We don't control all the variables going into a problem, but we do control the decision we make going forward within the options that are available to us, or the ones we're aware of, and again, this information is going to always be incomplete. Whether we realize it or not, we make hundreds of decisions every day, and we don't even think of twice about those. But when it comes to things like, what job am I going to apply to, then we beat ourselves up so much when we miss an opportunity or go for an opportunity that wasn't great for us, and it's kind of absurd. At least I'm prone to that. I don't know if you are. Of course there's going to be things you regret deciding to do. Of course there's going to be things that you wish you had done differently. But dwelling on those is not actually a productive use of our time. Every day, you have the opportunity to make decisions to change your life for the better. And you should. Every day, you should try to make the best decisions. On the other end, you don't want to overthink things. You don't want to spend so much time worrying about what the optimal decision to make at any given crossroad is that you end up not choosing anything because the time has elapsed before you could make a decision. And you don't want to flip a coin and decide everything like Two-Face either. There's some balance to be had between none of these choices really make any difference and I should just go with whatever, and I should think about these decisions. And ultimately, all decisions have consequences. They either restrict or open up opportunities for you to make different decisions further down the line. But we should not get too caught up in making the best possible choice every time. I suppose the point here is that you should be aware of the process by which you make those decisions and see if there's areas for improvement. If you're dissatisfied with your situation and you are in a position to make a decision that improves your life, you should do that. The only thing holding you back is you. So go out there and make the best decisions you can make 
and do the best that you can for yourself and don't beat yourself up too much if it doesn't work out. Thanks for stopping by. You guys will see me again next week when I put up another video that I hope you'll find interesting. Until then, stay curious.